Let's see if we can figure out attributes. I'm going to come up here and make a class. I'm going to call it test attributes. I could call it whatever I want to, but I'm actually going to make a less contrived example in this series than I usually do. Test attribute will inherit from attribute, and that is the end of that class. And now I'm going to say, hey, class, my test, my test suite, and we'll just put nothing in there for now. And at the top of this, I can put some square brackets. And now I can say test attribute. And the compiler will allow me to do that because test attribute inherits attribute. If it didn't inherit attribute, I'd get an error. In fact, let me build this, show you it succeeds. Let's take this off, build it, and the compiler says, hey, uh, uh, test attribute's not attribute. Yeah, okay, let's, let's go back and and say attribute. Attribute is a special class in .NET and the C-sharp compiler knows that all attributes must inherit from attribute. All right? Now I have here a single code file and I believe control alt L go over to my solution explorer. This C-sharp file is the only file inside of my my project here. So when I build this project it will generate an executable and that executable is what we can call an assembly. All right, now let me tell you a little hint. I know we haven't talked about assemblies very much, but assemblies can be executables or DLLs, and for all intents and purposes, that's all you need to know for now. When I say assembly, you can think executable or DLL. doesn't matter. All right, well, we'll get into all the nitty-gritty det details later in the assemblies videos. So I have this test suite. It has a test attribute. I have three types inside of my assembly here. I have this test attribute class, I have a my test suite class, and I also have a main class. All right, I want to look at this assembly and get all the type objects uh, for all the types inside this assembly. So let me show you how to do that. For each type T in assembly that has, uh, oh, control dot, let's get the correct using in here. We are doing a little bit of reflection. Assembly dot get executing assembly, which I know is this assembly because this is the code that is executing. And then I'm going to say dot get types. All right. In the early videos, in the types videos, we saw that type objects, this type object, if I click on that and hit F12, I can pretty much find out anything I want to know about a type. I can get its assembly. I can figure out its full name. There's other stuff in here that's is is it nested all right is it not public go figure is it sealed public all this stuff i can get all this information about a type at runtime all i have to do is get an instance of this type object and i can figure out anything i like to about the type now in other languages like c++ all this information is gone once you compile code it vaporizes away the classes are gone it's just code but in net no it keeps all that information in actual data tables so i'm saying hey give me all the types in the current executing assembly and this is one type two type three type whatever let's console write line t dot name all right, hopefully you would expect three names to print. Control F5. There you go. Test attribute, my test suite, main class. And the order here is arbitrary, even though it looks like it lined up there quite nicely. Now, I want to find, out of those types that I just got, I want to find which ones have a test attribute on them. All right, so I can go a little further here and say, uh, uh, how are we going to do this? For each attribute a in t dot give me your custom attributes All right now i always struggled with this name get custom attributes and uh, if it said just get attributes that would make sense to me give me all the attributes that you've tagged up here but now i have this get custom attributes well let me tell you what custom means if you've ever bought anything and you spent a hideous amount of money customizing it that's exactly what we're doing here we are we are customizing my test suite. We could come up here and, and say this is an internal class. Or we could say it's public. And all these kind of attributes we tag to the class, these kind of attributes, they're built into the C-sharp language. They're just there. But all of a sudden, we're now customizing our classes with some other stuff that's not built in the C-sharp language. We are extending the language, just putting this attribute on there. So I want to say, give me all the custom attributes. If A is a test attribute, 
then console right line t dot name plus is a test suite. Alright, and we're getting the regs squiggly here. I have to pass faults here. Ignore it. I'll talk about why we pass faults there in some other future video. It's so not important for this discussion. So what's this code doing? I'm saying go through all the types, grab all the attributes on the types, and if the attribute is a test attribute, then say, hey, we found a test suite. Alright, and if you notice, well, this class doesn't have any custom attributes on it. And this class, though, it does have custom attributes, and it's also the attribute we are interested in. Main class, it does not have any custom attributes on it. And even if it did, well, it doesn't. So there you go. Let me run this. Control F5, hopefully you would expect the output to be, my test suite is a test suite. Go figure. Alright, that's it. That is, I mean, I'm going to do several more videos on attributes, but don't make them harder than they are. They are just simply classes. You can think of them as data. We tag them onto things. In this case, I tagged it onto a class, and it just sits there and does absolutely nothing. It is up to us to say, hey, uh, go give me the attributes, and we look at them, and then I can do something. I say, hey, I found a test suite. I found a test suite. That's it. Otherwise, these attributes sit there inside the compiled assembly, the .NET level CLR assembly, and do nothing. It's a lot like data in a database. You could have tables and tables full of data, but if you never query the data or do any business analyst stuff on the data, it, it, it just sits there. Then it's useless at that point. And the same thing here. It's just data, and, and we have a test suite. Okay. A few last things before we wrap up here. This code is kind of ugly. I'm feeling link coming on. Let's see if we can reduce it to a link statement. Var test suites gets from t in assembly dot get executing assembly. You know what? I'm just going to copy this code or cut it. Control X, paste it right there. Uh, where t dot t dot we don't have link in here. Using system dot link control minus to go back to where I was at. Oops. Or t dot get custom attributes dot any of those attributes where they is or are. <laughs> so where it is a test attribute. Okay. So if you have an attribute, if any of your attributes are a test attribute, uh, then select that t because we know that t is a test suite and then i can just say for each type t oh i have to pass faults here again i'll tell you why in some other video type t in test suites cwt.name so i hope that that's a little cleaner i think now i'm just saying hey give me all the test suites and again we get my test suite and this will work for any type inside of our assembly that has the test attribute on it. I'm not limited to just this, so I could make a class and call it your test suite. And we'll just put the curlies up there. Test attribute. Look at me. Test attribute. And then run it again. And now we see my test suite and your test suite. So there you go. All right. That's it. Attributes are just dumb data. They sit there. They do nothing inside of your assembly unless you come around and say, hey, are you there? Let me look at you, all that kind of stuff. And I'll, I'll show you lots more examples of that in the upcoming videos.